now I want to go to uh, show you that I, I had a problem. I had to come home and organize a research program with the NIH money, of course, to start looking at the question, is this really true that proteins can somehow cause cancer? Really weird and, and strange. So I want to start this off by first mentioning uh, some cancer basics. Um, here I'm showing what schematically I'm showing is a normal cell and then uh, adjacent to it, a cancer cell. A normal cell, uh, and this is uh, part of the cancer process, a normal cell, let's say the carcinogen, the chemical carcinogen comes into the cell and there it meets up with an enzyme that metabolizes it in order to get rid of it. It's called a detoxification enzyme, mixed function oxidase. The carcinogen comes in, the enzyme attacks it and gets rid of most of it, detoxifies and puts it out in the urine, the feces and so forth. Uh, Unfortunately, in that enzymatic process, it's a very energetic kind of process, sort of like sparks flying here and there. It's a very, as I say, an oxidative thing. Uh, and occasionally some sparks sort of fly out, if I can characterize it that way, they hit the gene. They hit the gene, DNA in particular, the DNA is the, the, the uh, main agent in the gene, of course. It hits the gene, forms a bond with the DNA. Now the DNA is damaged. The DNA is, of course, the stuff that makes this cell then carry forward its message, if you will, and then the daughter cells. But in any case, the damage of the gene. Now, it turns out this is going on quite a lot in our bodies. The DNA is being damaged by chemical carcinogens coming in, if you will. But we have, fortunately, in place in a normal body, a so-called repair mechanism. That's a normal process. So even though we have this going on at some fairly constant level during our lives, chemicals coming in, binding the DNA, corrupting them, damaging them, we got a mechanism in place to repair, okay? If that is not repaired and the cell divides unrepaired, in other words, damaging, then we have a mutation. Now the mutation is the beginning of an early cancer, okay? Now we have a fixed mutated gene in that cancer cell. Then that goes through a whole series of stages as the cell divides, 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 and eventually goes to the tumor, and eventually we get diagnosed with cancer. That's the process. Starting out with here in the early stages, initiation, I call it, where the chemicals attacking, causing a mutation, uh, and then coming down here to eventually cause cancer. So with that background, let's have a look at uh, the kind of studies that we did. So I'm gonna show you uh, what happened over a 12 week period in the early stages of cancer formation. Uh, and this is the cancer index on the Y axis and along the X axis is uh, up to 12 weeks. Uh, and it starts over the mutated gene, just as I suggest in the normal cell. So what then happens? After this, after this occurs, the first thing that happens is the 20% uh, protein diet that causes plenty of cancer to form. 5%, that dotted line at the bottom, which would have shown much better in, in an alternate mode. But in any case, the 5% uh, uh, diet, protein diet, cancer did not form. Then, that, I mean, that was striking enough, but then uh, we tried something more. I shifted the protein content of the diet during the course. Every three weeks, I changed the protein content. Feeding not the 20% the, the protein, the cancer is growing as it would along that red line. Fortunately, to 5% is turned off, and then on, and then off. That was really dramatic. Um, that tended to sort of support the idea that a higher pr protein diet causes cancer, grows cancer rather well. And then during the, that course of development, if we switch the diets from 20% to 5% and back and forth, uh, as you can see there, uh, the, the development of cancer was a function of the, um, of, the, of the protein consumption. That was striking information. That was really uh, exactly opposite what I had been led to believe and what I thought I was seeing in fact. Um, it was far from my days on the farm when we were milking cows. Casein actually was the protein that we were using uh, to not just us, but the Indian workers initially. This is the protein we were using to turn on the cancer very dramatically. Casein is the main protein in cow's milk. And here it is being shown to cause cancer. In contrast, a couple of plant proteins, soy protein and wheat protein, did not increase the, the precancer development even when they're fed at the higher 20% level of total calories. Now, I wanna go here and ask the next, next question. The next question really has to do with, okay, all that's well and good if that's true. 
But when, when I'm still left with a lot of doubt. I just don't know quite how, how to address this question. The best way to do that is to go and start looking biochemically in a sense at the mechanism that goes on inside the cell to see if it can account for the mechanism by which the high protein diet turns on cancer. Now in cancer research, we tend to talk about that idea in the context of a scheme, something like this. This is a timeline, three different stages of cancer development over time, if you will. Initiation, that's when the mutation is forming. I just showed you that. The second is when the cell now fixed in the cell, now starts dividing, dividing, dividing. We call it cell expansion. It's being promoted and eventually it grows and grows and we now, we see a real cancer. That in turn eventually is noticed in the case of humans, we notice that. We get diagnosed and that's uh, called progression. Oftentimes that cancer at that particular point in time is uh, in a danger of metastasizing, shifting its location to other diseases. This, I wanna show you, this is a series of errors here you can see going in one direction. I show it here in one direction just so, this way because this is the assumption. This is the assumption when we presume that cancer is a really caused by genes back here, damaged genes, if you will. Genes don't reverse. Genes, when cells divide, divide, those mutations don't reverse very rarely, very rarely, not nearly enough to make any difference. So the, the general assumption, if, if cancer is caused by these chemicals that cause mutations, the mutations are now there, if they're gonna keep on dividing, but it's not gonna reverse. So it leads to the idea that whichever our genes are, and whichever chemicals may have damaged those genes, those two things, genes and the chemicals dividing them, or, or certain, they are the real causes of cancer. That's what that really uh, means right there. Uh, in contrast, what I just showed you in our studies is that this second stage is not true. This is where we are changing the protein up and down. Yeah, we started out with the same chemical right here. We had damaged genes and so forth and so on. But when we shifted the level of protein consumption, as you can see, we could make it go forward or we could turn around to make it go back. That was an exciting concept because um, it shows that cancer, gosh, maybe it's reversible. And of all things by nutrition. This is work that I was doing 40 to at least 40, even 50 years ago. Uh, then we turn, then I, I, I turned my attention to sort of looking for the mechanisms, as I said, to try to explain why this was occurring. And uh, I hope you can't see this here. Uh, and so we look for a bunch of mechanisms. And I'm summarizing here about 10, 12, maybe 13, 14 years worth of research. A lot of graduate students do doctoral dissertations on this, on these, uh, these questions. And I was looking for the mechanism to account for this effect, because if we could find one mechanism, one enzyme that was changed, or one this or one that, maybe then we could develop a drug and prevent the protein from doing this, this, this dirty work, if you will. Uh, what we learned that uh, if we look for mechanisms during the first stage, as you can see here, and the second stage, and the second stage, protein stage, we look for a bunch of different mechanisms and we looked at them one by one. I mean, for example, and the ones in white are, the, are all increased. That is to say the high protein diet increase the rate of, of the entry of the carcinogen into the cell. Oh, he said that, that's the answer. Increase the rate at which the carcinogen goes to the cell. When the, cell comes, when the carcinogen comes into the cell, as you recall, it meets up with an enzyme and the enzyme is trying to get rid of it. Um, and so we, we looked at that. What effect does protein have on that enzyme activity? It increases the enzyme activity. And it does it in two ways. It increases the amount of the enzyme, increase the, the characteristics of the enzyme. So the protein is turning on the cancer that is increasing the detoxification, if you will, but maybe increasing the sparks flying out that bind to the DNA. <clears throat> so we looked at what effect does um, protein have on the binding of the carcinogens in the DNA. And sure enough, we got a really nice dose response relationship. The higher the protein consumption, the greater that was, that was bound to the DNA. Then we looked at, as I said, the normal body system we tend to repair all that stuff and it works really, really well, 99.99% of the time probably. But in any case, the, we look to see what effect did protein have on that DNA repair. Lo and behold, the high protein diet decreased the DNA repair. It was ruining our, our fail safe mechanism, turning everything else on, turning the one good thing we had, turning it off. And we went to the second stage and we looked at more mechanisms. I don't 
really want to get into all the details here. But the, the main thing was, we looked at, after that number of years, I got to a point where we had looked at 10 possible mechanisms. Every single one, every single mechanism that we looked at, the high protein diet made it such that it was increasing cancer formation. So it turned out eight of these mechanisms, the one shown white here, uh, they were increased. That increases cancer. Two mechanisms that were intended to protect us, um, the, the high protein diet decreased them. Altogether, 10 out of 10, the high protein diet was changing all these mechanisms and simultaneously at the same time. I mean, that, that was a striking idea. I, that really got me into thinking about you know, there maybe there isn't such a thing as a single mechanism. Maybe we're fixated. We're fixated on a single nutrient. Maybe we're fixated on a single mechanism. We're, we're going to develop a drug. No, we can't. We, we have all that stuff working together. It suggests an entirely different situation. Then I'm going to argue this becomes characteristics of nutrition. It begins to distinguish, as well as I can say, it begins to distinguish the difference between nutritional treatment of disease as opposed to drug development. Drug, you may recall, I said drugs are hitting one thing at a time, protective that way, nutrition is taking care of all of them at the same time.